Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyi al-Mustafa wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allahu wahduhu la sharika la. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Amma ba'd. Assalamualaikum wa rahmatullah. And welcome to another episode of The Seeker's Corner where we're hopefully seeking with the seekers and not sleeping with the sleepers. I'm your host, uh, Sarkhil Abu Alia, and today's uh, topic of discussion, as you can see uh, coming on your screens at the bottom, Islam's three pillars of spiritual growth. Islam's three pillars of spiritual growth. And I thought what I do today uh, I, I've cheated slightly today because I actually gave this as a Friday uh, khutbah or sermon earlier on in the day, uh, a 15, 20 minute sermon. But I'm going to flesh this issue out a bit more uh, into today's uh, topic of uh, discussion. And we're going to be I'm going to be reading uh, from one of the one of uh, my best books one of the books most beloved to me. Um, I mean, I read Arabic, I, I read Urdu um, at some degree, uh, especially uh, religious Urdu, maybe not kind of um, secular Urdu newspapers and things like that. And obviously I, I, I read English. And in the English language, this particular book is such a gem. It's a gem for a number of reasons. Uh, Imam Ibn Qayyim al jawziya or Ibn al Qayyim. Uh, his book, Al-Wabil Sayyib Min Kalim Al-Tayyib, which has been translated under the, ti- under the title of The Invocations of God or The Remembrance of Allah. And this particular edition is by the Islamic Texts Society, the ITS. Uh, it is, though there are three or four different versions or translations out there in the market, this one, as far as I w- I'm aware, was the first translation. And it is by far the most superior. It is not only a beautiful translation, but really the translator or translators have actually captured into English the the style, the perfume of Ibn al-Qayyim's writings. Ibn al-Qayyim, unlike his sheikh and teacher, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn al-Qayyim's writings are are generally very soft, laced with beautiful, exquisite words that really move the heart and stir the soul. And actually the translators have captured so much of that essence and that uh, that scent uh, into the English. So uh, please, please do not get another translation of this. Try to get this one, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, Ibn al-Qayyim al jawziya The Invocations of God, the Islamic Text Society. We've already actually got it up there. Uh, the Amazon link uh, to this particular book, both in softback and hardback, paperback and hardback. Uh, choose whatever you wish. But this is definitely one that uh, Muslims should have on their shelf, not just to adorn it, this book is, uh, it, even though the focus of the book is about dhikrullah, the remembrance of Allah, in discussing the remembrance of Allah and uh, the 70 odd benefits about remembering Allah, Ibn al Qayyim ends up going through more or less the whole of the inward journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will get to, to taste a flavor of uh, what the dawah in the West and the teachings really in the West is currently missing. Yes, alhamdulillah, we have a lot of fiqh, we have some uh, a fair bit of theology and all of that is needed. We have a fair bit of polemics and apologists of, you know, uh, arguing and debating with Christians and other non-Muslims and secularists and liberals and atheists, agnostics and and you know, and some of that is needed, no doubt. Uh, but there is uh, 
there is little benefit if I'm going to be a candle that kind of gives light, gives light to others and burns myself out and burn myself out at the same time um, because I don't have that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is really what we're trying to not just discuss here, but try to nurture in ourselves here uh, as a uh, weekly uh, reminder. Easier said than done, no doubt. Easier said than done. And Ibn al-Qayyim is one of those arbabul qulub, masters of the heart. And let me end, let me start on a, I mean, it's not a negative point, but it is a critical point. I remember uh, many years back, so we're talking about well over 10, 15 years ago, I read passages of this book to a group of da'is and uh, students of knowledge, or who consider themselves students of knowledge. And I didn't tell them that I was reading Imam Ibn al-Qayyim's work. I just said, look, what do you think of these passages in this particular book? And I read some passages from it. Uh, I won't go into it here. Uh, but the end result was uh, three quarters of those people who were listening to me said, oh, it must be some dodgy, Sufi, mystic, deviant, misguided person who said this. I said, OK, OK. Uh, and I read a few more passages and they were even more passages and they were even more certain. Yes, yeah, definitely uh, dodgy deviant. And then I said, ah, actually, it's Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullah alayhi, may Allah have mercy upon him. They said, oh, oh, very surprised. They were very surprised, very taken aback, uh, flabbergasted, uh, uh, some of them were. And I said, what does that tell us? And I said, it tells us a couple of things. One despite your practice in Islam for five, ten years, none of you and your da'is and your students of knowledge, none of you have the basic tools to, to judge haq from batil, truth from false, sunnah from bid'ah, uh, the right spiritual path from deviation, because you've just condemned all of this. And secondly, it also shows us that this is missing from your Islam, and actually the aqidah, the beliefs, and the fiqh, the, 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 the religious practices and their outward obligations and duties, they are there to serve, uh, aqidah and fiqh are there to serve suluk, our spiritual journey to Allah. That is to say, iman and Islam are there to serve ihsan so that we can end up worshipping Allah with basic correct beliefs, with the right outward duties and obligations being fulfilled, but we can worship uh, Allah upon Ihsan, and Ihsan was described by the Prophet as, أَن تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَى That you worship Allah as though seeing Him. And though you may not see him, know that he sees you. And so there is uh, a type of seeing that the heart has the potential to realize and achieve. That type of shuhud bil qalb, mushahada, as it's called, that spiritual witnessing of Allah's actions. Allah's attributes higher than that, dare I say, Allah himself, the heart witnessing. As regards to the eyes seeing Allah, then that's only reserved for the believers on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make us amongst them. The Prophet وسلم, would make that dua, uh, part of which says, Allahumma inni as'aluka. Oh Allah, grant me the delight of gazing at your face and the yearning to meet you. Okay, uh, It's a sahih hadith in the Sunnah of an -Nasai. It's a long hadith and this is part of uh, the, the, that long dua. Oh Allah, grant me the delight. Oh uh, Allah, uh, delight of, ga uh, of gazing at your face and the yearning to meet you. It's the lover's du'a, right? It's the lover's du'a. And Ibn al-Qayyim, he captures so much of 
that spiritual essence in this book. And right at the beginning of the book, literally when we turn to the first page of where he actually starts the book, leaving alone the editor's introduction, um, he says this, and this is going to form uh, our discussion uh, today, inshallah. So he starts with Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, the most merciful, with the bestower of mercy. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمِ uh, there is no, there is neither might nor power except in Allah, uh, the exalted, uh, the august. Allahu subhanahu wa ta'ala al mas'ul al marju al ijaba. Ayyata wallakum fi dunya wal akhira. Wa ayy yusbiha alaykum ni'amahu zahiratan wa baatina. So there is no, neither strength nor power saving Allah. Uh, we implore, uh, it is Allah we implore and whose response we await to watch over you in this world and the next to shower you with his graces outwardly and inwardly, and to make you amongst those who, when blessed, give thanks. When tried and tested, patiently persevere. And when sinful, seek Allah's forgiveness. For in uh, uh, where am I? For these three conditions, meaning the conditions of shukr, sabr, and istighfar, uh, being grateful to Allah, uh, patiently persevering when tried and tested, and seeking Allah's forgiveness, istighfar. فَإِنَّ هَذِهِ الْأُمُورَ الثَّلَاثَةَ أَنْوَانُ سَعَادَةِ الْعَبْدِ وَعَلَامَةُ فَلَاحِهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَأُخْرَاهُ ولا ينفك عبد أنها عبدا فإن العبد دائم تقلب تقلب بين هذه الأطباق الثلاثة. So Ibn Al Qayyim says, let me just read the whole thing. There is neither a might nor power except in Allah, exalted and august is He. It is Allah we implore and whose response we await to watch over to watch over you in this world and the next, to shower you with His graces outwardly and inwardly, and to make you amongst those who, when blessed, give thanks, when tried, uh, patiently persevere, and when sinful, seek forgiveness. For these three conditions are a token of the servant's happiness and the signs of his success in this world and in the next. No servant is without them, but is constantly shifting from one to the other. Uh, so, how does that apply to us uh, and how and in what sense does that form the three pillars of uh, our spiritual growth? Well, as I mentioned in the, uh, the Jum'ah Khutbah, the Friday sermon today earlier on, um, these three vir spiritual virtues, uh, the virtues of shukr, sabr and istighfar, being grateful to Allah, gratitude to God, uh, patiently persevering in term, uh, when faced with hardships, trials and tribulations and calamities, and istighfar, repenting or, or seeking Allah's forgiveness uh, when we've disobeyed him or sinned or fallen short of the mark or rebelled against his commands or prohibitions. These three spiritual virtues, uh, they can be likened to uh, the operating system of a computer or, a, or of a mobile phone. OK, so a, a mobile phone or, a, or a, a, an iPad, for example, a tablet has all these apps that allow allow us to do all these wonderful, wonderful things. OK, some of those apps are, uh, are to do with work. Uh, some of those apps are to do with entertainment. Some of those apps are to do with video editing and so on and so forth. Uh, but those apps will not work or will not work well if they are not embedded in the right operating system. The, the, uh, the iOS or the OS has to be right. The operation, operating system has to be right. In one sense, not to kind of 
overstretch the, uh, the analogy. In one sense, the human software of the soul, our operating system is really, ma is really made up of these three spiritual virtues. Because a human being will always be in a state of blessings or being tried and tested or having sinned, being a sinner. And the response of these three states, being blessed, being tried, being sinful, the response to these three is, uh, when blessed, be thankful and grateful to Allah, meaning be in a state of shukr. When tried and tested, be in a state of sabr, patiently persevering. Not being complacent, not being lackadaisical, not being blasé, but doing what is required of us, rolling up our sleeves, trying to get on with life and overcome the challenge or the trial or the tribulation or the hurt or the loss, but without losing it, without saying words that offend the glory of God or behaving in ways that, you know, we've just lost control of ourselves. That's pay, that's sober, patiently persevering with restraint, with fortitude, fortitude, with rolling up our sleeves and getting on with it. And the response to uh, disobeying Allah uh, and sinning is istighfar. Uh, sincerely and penitently uh, and remorsefully saying Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, oh Allah forgive me, oh Allah forgive me, Rabbi khfilli, Rabbi khfilli, my Lord, forgive me, my Lord, forgive me your words to that effect. Ibn al-Qayyim says that a person, a, a, the servant will always be in, it, be in one of these states at one time, this, he or she may be in this state, the state of sabr, then it might be the state of shukr, then it might be the state of istighfar. Why? Because at one point in their life, they may be tried and tested. At another point, that, that test may be over and they are blessed with uh, blessings and Allah's, uh, Allah's bounties. And at another time, uh, they have misused those bounties and ended up uh, disobeying Allah, uh, sinning and rebelling against uh, the divine sovereignty. So it will be shukr, sabr, istighfar, shukr, istighfar, sabr, sabr, istighfar, shukr. That, and our life will continue to revolve around these three pillars. And so in that sense, uh, we can say it's like the software of the soul and anything and everything else we do in our lives. They are like the apps. They're just additions and they will work well. And the fruits of those apps or the fruits of our actions and aspirations and goals. OK, they are like, they are like the apps on a on a on a, on a smartphone. Uh, those apps will uh, yield their fruits. Uh, if the software is uh, up and running correctly, and if the software is constantly being refreshed, uh, our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly being refreshed. SubhanAllah. Uh, it is a beautiful description, really, uh, because Ibn al-Qayyim, Barak uh, al-Fikum Amal, Ibn al-Qayyim has this way of really impacting uh, the heart, uh, Brother Amal, uh, as I'm sure you probably know. Uh, <laughs> need more IT analogies. <laughs> um, that's probably the only one you're going to get today, uh, the M. Um, but it, when we think of it in this way, then Alhamdulillah, really half the journey is already done that I, as a human being, or more specifically, I, as a Muslim, as a believer, inshallah ta'ala, 
I'm going to be in one of these three situations and each of these three situations demands from me as an act of loving submission and as an act of faith. It demands from me one of three responses, shukr, sabr or istighfar. Thankfulness or gratitude to God, patiently persevering and seeking Allah or seeking Allah's forgiveness. Always one or the other. Let me mention three verses. I mean, the Quran is full of verses to do with patience. There are about 90, 90 or more verses to do with sabr. There are many verses to do with shukr. And obviously there are many, many verses to do with istighfar. But let's take one verse that relates to each of these things to see what else we might be able to uh, tease out of these uh, three uh, software of the soul, spiritual virtues. Um, so about the shakirun, the people of gratitude, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, in Surah Ibrahim, it's the seventh verse, Surah 14, chapter 14, verse 7. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَا رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that and uh, when your Lord proclaimed or when your Lord announced uh, if you show gratitude to me, I will increase you. Increase you in what? Increase you in blessings. If you show gratitude to me, I will increase you in blessings. But if you are ungrateful to me, then indeed my punishment is terrible. Indeed my punishment is terrible. Gratitude begets more blessings of Allah. Ingratitude becomes a cause for blessings to be lifted and removed from our lives. Whether they are personal blessings, a happy family, a loving spouse, uh, a, a loving, uh, loving children, uh, um, success and goodness at work, uh, respect uh, and uh, thought well of in society, uh, a decent place to live in, uh, a decent wage, um, and, uh, a good sound religious understanding, uh, whatever blessings people think of, in terms of material blessings or in terms of religious blessings. The more we show gratitude to God, the more we are grateful to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we are increased in these blessings, spiritual blessings being far, far, far greater and superior than material blessings, but blessings nonetheless. And if we are ungrateful, then the blessings, instead of being secured and showering down upon us, Allah in his divine wisdom removes them bit by bit, or lots at a time or all at, or all at once, as per the divine wisdom. And that's why Ali radiallahu anhu said, gratitude secures blessings and increases them. And ingratitude does the opposite. If, for example, my relationship, for example, in marriage or between parents and children or in the workplace, if there is something amiss in my relationships, the relationship is faltering, it's not as happy and easygoing as it used to be, it's getting a bit sharp and it's getting a bit ugly. Yes, maybe as a marital couple, you might need to see a marriage counsellor, maybe. 
But maybe it's because there is some sin or disobedience going on in the marital house. And Allah has withdrawn the blessings of marital harmony, of sakina, of tumanina, of mahabba, of rahma. Sins remove blessings. Okay. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu said in a sahih hadith, no two people who love each other for the sake of Allah or for the sake of Islam and, and then separation comes between them except due to a sin one of them has committed. Okay. Now that is the highest form of love. This is not love between husband and wife, you know, with the natural instincts of love and intimacy. We're talking about higher love. What is the higher love? No two people love each other for the sake of Allah or the sake of Islam. That's the highest form of love. Okay. And then what? One of them sins and that causes a, a rift between them. A friendship based on pure love of Allah that develops over 20 years, destroyed in 20 seconds due to a sin not both of them commit, one of them. Imagine if both of them commit sins. Imagine if both, uh, Im imagine if both of them committed a sin, not just one, but both. Then imagine both of them committed sins. Imagine what? catastrophe we are inviting upon ourselves in terms of the removal of blessings and Ibn Al-Qaim starts off after Bismillah Rahman Rahim by saying wala hawla wala quwata illa billahi al-aliyu al there is neither might nor power except in Allah without Allah we will not be able to get success or marital harmony and tranquility back into our marriage it doesn't matter what we do if Allah doesn't will it it's not going to happen because there is no might nor power except with Allah what he wills happens what he does not will will not happen so instead of running off to the marriage counselor maybe one of the spouses is missing prayers why maybe one of the spouses is uh, not fasting in Ramadan. Maybe the income that has come into the house knowingly is ha part of it is haram. Not unknowingly, it's beyond my control, but knowingly <coughs> it's, uh, it's partly haram. Maybe the things that we're seeing... <coughs> on the big screen, uh, it's it, it's haram for me to see. <coughs> uh, I'm going to pause the video here. I'm really uh, apologies. I'm just going to <coughs> uh, I'm just going to get this cough out.
Ah, apologies for that. <coughs> I've had a, a throat condition for the past uh, few months and it's been getting worse. <coughs> so just, uh, anyway, alhamdulillah. Uh, so let's get back to where we were, inshallah. And I, I do apologize for that, uh, for that delay. I, I've got myself a drink now, so inshallah ta'ana. With Allah's permission, it will be better. Okay, so the first condition is uh, being grateful to Allah for blessings. There are a few more things I'd like to say about this because it's really important. When we, gratitude is what? Gratitude in Islam is not just saying, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. Ashkurullah, ashkurullah, ashkurullah. That is indeed part of gratitude. But Ibn al-Qayyim tells us, I think in the same book and elsewhere, uh, that gratitude is built upon three pillars or three foundations. Gratitude of the heart, that any blessing that comes to us, anything good that happens to us in our lives, whether it's material good or spiritual good, whether it's, you know, a worldly good or religiously good, then the ultimate source is Allah. مَا أَصَابُكُمْ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَصَابُكُمْ مِنْ سَيِّئَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكْ The Qur'an says, whatever good comes to you, it's from Allah. Whatever calamity befalls you, it is from your own selves. Meaning the sins that you've done has invited that calamity. So the first thing we need to know is that whatever good comes to us, small or large, insignificant or highly significant, the, the ultimate giver is Allah. It may have come through this person, this means, and that direction, but ultimate, ultimately it's from him. And the heart has to have that recognition that all good is from God and God alone. That's uh, the first condition of shukr, of being truly grateful. The second is that uh, where possible, I should express that thanks to Allah on my tongue, you know, alhamdulillah, uh, by Allah's kindness, uh, he got me this job, uh, alhamdulillah. This. I, I may also thank people thereafter, but first it's thanking God. Okay, and we uh, verbalize that thanks because the tongue should have a share in thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third pillar is that the limbs, the eyes, the hands, and so on and so forth, they must not use any of Allah's blessings to disobey him. Allah gives me some money and I use it in the haram. How can that be? Allah gives me the gift of sight and I see Forbidden images. How can that be? Allah gives me an eloquent tongue and I, and I use it to swear, curse, backbite, slander. How is that possible? If we are not fulfilling gratitude with the heart, the tongue and the limbs, then we're not being grateful. And if we're not grateful, we won't be securing those blessings. That's something to think about in our lives. When relationships are not going right, it might not be the other person's fault. It might be a sin that I've committed, and it might not even be a direct sin. Okay, uh, in the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, we have this, uh, this narration that he relates that one of the sahaba would uh, left his house in the morning and he got on his, uh, it's either a, uh, a horse or a camel, and the horse was a bit a jolting a bit. It was unrestful. It wasn't like it normally was. So he stops trying to get on the horse. He goes back in the house and he comes back out a few moments later and he gets on the horse and the horse is all calm and in its usual stillness and subservience. And someone asks him, what happened? He said, 
my horse was behaving in a very unusual, untypical way. And I realized that was because maybe I had uh, I had committed a sin or violated someone's right in the household. Uh, and so I went in and I corrected it. And once I corrected it, Allah restored the blessings of having an obedient horse. SubhanAllah. That is the believer's way of thinking. They see the world, they see the cosmos, the world, as the playing out of the divine acts, the divine wisdom, and the divine justice. Because all is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The believer sees past the worldly causes to, to see the hand of Allah behind all things. That is the depth of faith that Islam is seeking to nurture in us, not just momentarily, but as a normative perception of the world, of the universe. SubhanAllah. And then at a higher level, SubhanAllah, when we when people do good to us, initially we're we're thankful. That's so kind of you, thank you. And they carry on doing good. And the good that they're doing is significant and it's meaningful to us. Then our hearts begin to deepen in our gratitude for them. And at some stage, when that continues to happen, gratitude evolves into loving praise. Alhamdulillah. You are such a kind and considerate person. You are just so generous. And it's and the heart now is not just thankful, it's lovingly thankful. It enters into a stage of mahabba, of love. And that's what happens when, that's why they say one of the greatest ways to nurture divine love is to think of Allah's blessings and kindness to us. And that gratitude, if it's real and genuine and consistent, will morph into, evolve into, flower into love of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one of the ways, subhanAllah. Uh, then you have uh, sabr. Let me be briefer on sabr and istighfar. Uh, looking at the time. So the Quran says, in one uh, celebrated verse, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amunu sta'inu bis sabri wa salat illa Allah ma'as sabirin. In Surah Al-Baqarah we read, O you who believe, seek the help, you know, seek help bis sabri wa salat with patient perseverance and salat and prayer. For in uh, inna Allah Indeed, Allah uh, is with the patient ones. What is the word sabr? They say sabr uh, in the classical Arabic dictionaries is habsun nafs. It's restraining the soul from behaving in a reckless way or a disobedient way or just losing composure and control and you know and it ends up running around like a headless chicken that sabr is restraining ourselves from that happening whether it's at the loss of a a, a loved one a dearly loved one uh one week one weeps tears that's understandable one's heart grieves that is totally understandable and acceptable but one's tongue doesn't say, oh, why, why in that attitude? One doesn't, the tongue doesn't complain against God. Uh, the body doesn't start beating at the chairs, pulling the beard, pulling the hair and uh, wailing like that, going into some mega depression. What? How can we be mega depressed? There's a loved one and, and, and sadness and sorrow is certainly there. And that may take years to heal. It may literally take years to heal. But we have, we have other loved ones present and living. Do they not have some rights over us? 
Are we now loving people more than we love Allah? So the Prophet ﷺ said, on the death of his infant son Ibrahim, the eyes shed tears, the heart grieves, but we say nothing to offend the majesty of God. O oh, Ibrahim, it is because of you we are grieving. So sabr is a type of restraint. What sabr is not, it's not complacency. Oh, just sit there and don't do anything. Here is a calamity, um, you know, like, uh, I don't know, whatever calamity. Uh, I, I, I see someone have an accident, fall off their bike, you know, on my road. Okay. Uh, or it's someone dear to me. Okay, uh, and they've really been hurt and injured, and it's upset me. So someone would be to roll up my sleeves and see what I can do and see if I can help them heal and see if I can get them to an ambulance or to a hospital or whatever it be, and whatever else I need to do, and then hopefully be patient, patiently persevere in helping them get better and do the right things to help them get better, or myself to help me get better if, if I'm the one that suffered the calamity. What sabr isn't is, oh, what the heck? So be it. K sarah, sarah, whatever will be, will be. That's not sabr. Sabr, likewise, isn't doing something haram to get something halal. Oh, well, uh, we are being oppressed and, you know, our women and children being killed. So let's go and kill civilian women and children outside of a bona uh, not only can't we do that in a bona fide jihad we can't do that outside of a bona fide jihad in an act of terrorism for example um doing something haram to try to achieve something halal it, you know, the means doesn't justify the ends in in, in, in the islamic ethics so sabr means active perseverance okay and we are going to face difficulties and challenges. They could be mundane, they could be worldly, they could be spiritual, they could be deep. It's just the nature and the vicissitudes of life that we will have ups and downs. So sabr is an essential ingredient and we will discuss that as a separate subject, inshallah ta'ala, in the future. And the last quality is istighfar. Allah says about the mustaghfirun, those who uh, consistently seek his forgiveness. It's in, uh, it's in Surah Al-Namr, this verse that I'm going to read, uh, verse uh, chapter 27, verse 46. And it's when the Prophet Saleh, alayhi salam, when the Prophet Saleh, peace be upon him, he comes to his people, the people of Thamud, and he offers them the message. And so the verse of the Quran says, Qala ya qawmi. Uh, and Salah, he says, O oh, my people, Lima hasana? Why is it that you wish to bring about evil upon yourselves rather than rather than good? Lola Why do you not seek Allah's forgiveness? so that you may be shown mercy. So that you may be shown mercy. Amongst the 101 or 1001 benefits istighfar has, seeking Allah's forgiveness, not just cleansing ourselves, not just restoring our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it just draws down his mercy in our life, whereby things get fixed. In another verse of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Allah will never punish a people whilst the Prophet is amongst them, nor will he punish a people whilst they are seeking his forgiveness. And Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, he said, Today, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is no longer with us. So what is left to protect us from a social calamity is seeking Allah's forgiveness. 
Subhanallah. Lola, Lola, tastaghfirun Allah, la allakum turhamun. Why do you not seek Allah's forgiveness that you may be shown mercy? So let me round it up by just simply saying that this, these three virtues form the software of the soul. And it's something that we need to give thought to regularly in our lives and in our spiritual practice and in our suluk and religious uh, spiritual growth that uh, am I being grateful for Allah's blessings? Do I, the case of the believer is always wonderful. If he is, uh, if he is blessed, he is thankful to Allah. If he is tried, then he is patient to Allah. The case of the believer is always wonderful. How do you think Sahih Muslim? Uh, and so the believing eyes see the world with a type of joyousness. Yes, there is tragedy. Yes, there is calamity. Yes, things are out of kilter and sink. Yes, there are injustices and darknesses in this world. But along with that, there is light in this world. There is joy. There are things that are in sync and harmony. Okay. There is truth and justice and beauty. And so there is a lot to be hopeful for. And there is a lot to be joyous about. Uh, and just the way that Allah has made the world. Okay. If there is one if there is one corner of my world which is dark and ugly, bad is going on, there will be another corner of my world somewhere where I can open up the window to let the light and the joy of life come into it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still in control and always will be. We need to learn to see the world with the eyes of Iman not with capitalist eyes or consumerist eyes or the eyes of greed or the eyes of ego and material advancement, just simply with the eyes of joyous faith. SubhanAllah. And we need to see uh, if I'm doing patiently, doing the right thing to make things better, and am I part of the healing process in my family life, in my community life, in the global life of human beings? And when I do sin and one does not try to sin purposely, one doesn't want to dice with death. But when one sins, istighfar, Seeking Allah's forgiveness and or all repenting to him is a requirement. And the more istighfar we do for the sins that we know we knowingly commit and the sins that we unknowingly commit. For the sins that we do openly and for the sins that we do secretly. For the sins that we're aware of and for the sins that we're unaware of. Istighfar is the constant companion on the tongue of a believer. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. And in the Sahih Hadith, Ibn Umar says, the Prophet Salaam would often sit down in one spot and not get up from there until he had said, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh a hundred times. And in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, I seek Allah's forgiveness more than 70 times in a day. And in another version, more than 100 times. So we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that he make us amongst those people who, when blessed, give thanks. When tried, patiently persevere. And when sinful, Seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and we will find him most generous, most willing to wipe away our sins and restore us and our relationship with him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala wa akhru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil Um Okay, so uh, we've got about five, seven minutes. We could maybe 
take any questions or comments or anything like that, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, three pillars of spiritual growth, shukr, sabr and istighfar. Uh, please do get the book, uh, Ibn al-Qayyim. It's a very good read. We need to be readers. Uh, it's not enough and we should not content ourselves with just watching videos or listening to audios. Uh, we as an ummah, our Prophet Sallallahu was told, Iqra, read, not isma, listen, even though we need to listen, right? Okay, but read. We must become a, we must return to being a reading tradition. To, and you know what? Uh, if one isn't reading religious works, then read some decent literature so that it helps expand our mind. Of course, reading religious, good religious literature is the right thing, the best thing, sorry, but help expand our minds, expand our vo vocabulary, help us to communicate uh, the message in a more eloquent, persuasive, uh, inspiring manner. Uh, currently on the whole, collectively, we Muslims are in an abysmal spiritual and intellectual state. Scholarship is an, at an all-time low and three quarters of the people out there representing us, maybe not three quarters, but you know, half the people representing us at the scholarly level either aren't scholars or subhanAllah, we just need to do much more work about that. And the reality also is that whilst one doesn't need a PhD to, to have a spiritual connection to Allah, certainly not. But the greatest spiritual writing, whether in prose form or poetry form, tends to have rich spiritual words and vocabulary. OK. And if I'm kind of really not sensitive to that type of vocabulary, uh, then I can then I miss out on a lot. And all I end up saying is like the Americans Oh, to everything that is brilliant, fantastic, uh, uh, unique. Everything becomes, that's awesome. Tornado, that's awesome. Donut, that's awesome. Uh, because the language, <laughs> I'm not talking about Americans, okay? Americans tend to have, uh, from my point of view, a richer vocabulary than your average Brit, or so it seems to me, and Allah knows best. But what happens is we know one word. Uh, and therefore we can't express. And when it's expressed to us, we don't know what it's talking about. Uh, there's no reason we have to put a ceiling level on us. Well, you know, the Quran comes down in the richest Arabic, and there is an indication in there that um, without being academic, let the language be as rich as possible, uh, because there are times where richness in language is the thing and helps us on the path. So inshallah ta'ala, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, please do read good material and read good material, not shoddy translations. And there's there's so much shoddy translations. There, there are people who are translating, a, making a business out of it, and they should not. They are doing a disservice to Islam. They are doing a disservice. Neither is there English. Uh, uh, Neither, neither do they have eloquent English and their Arabic is third rate. Their English is third rate. And they're producing all of these translations. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. How dare you uh, lower the standard of Islam? Okay. And if we can't do it, then let's, we don't have to, you know, no one's telling us we have to translate. Uh, but you're going to translate the book of Ibn al-Qayyim, make sure that you understand his level of Arabic and make sure you can express it in, in the level of English which befits his level of, of, of Arabic. Um, which is why uh, I am not charitable when it comes to uh, encouraging people to read shoddy literature. And actually, you know, shoddy literature, the best thing for that is to, if you have an old fireplace, use it as firewood or recycle it, okay, and then it will be made into new paper and that paper can be used by uh, people who are going to do more befitting translations in short uh, Much of what is out there in the English language is third rate 
and it has no place on any bookshelf in any serious seeker's house in Charlottetown. Sabr, shukr, istighfar. Sabr, shukr, istighfar. How blessed we are to be guided to uh, the Tawheed of Allah and to the Sunnah and Seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That in and of itself is enough cause for shukr, for gratitude. So with that, inshallah ta'ala, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us mustaghfirun, to make us sabirun, to make us shakirun. Uh, and thank you for all your comments and your salams. Tofu, uh, just put out the essence of today's talk up there on your screens. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq and success. We ask Allah for his forgiveness. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Assalamu ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Until next week. Wassalamu alaikum.